Today we're going to talk about nested loops and I'm going to create two simple loops for you, loops of the kind that we've studied already. So for the first one, and I'm going to create a second loop here that's going to be after the first one. And my question to you, first of all, is, is it okay that I have this variable I here and then I repeat the variable I? Is this going to cause a compiler error? Second question is, how many times will this loop run, the first one, and how many times will the second loop run? Mr. Snead, sir, when I hit the compile button, do you think I'm going to get a compiler error because this I variable is uh, in both places within the same method? No, he says it's going to be fine, and he's right about that. You can see there's no compiler error here. And, sir, can you explain to me how come there's not a conflict between these two I variables? So this variable is declared here. When does this variable die, sir? Can you tell me? Okay, right here it dies at this closing curly bracket. So when we get here, I is no longer alive. So creating another one is not a problem. So that's good. And now my next question is, how many times will this loop run? And how many times will this loop run? You can see it runs a total of five times. We can say that if two loops have the identical body and they run in series, series means one after the other, then the frequency of the first loop adds to the frequency of the second loop. We can say that the frequency of these loops add. Here's three here and two here. So the total number of times it runs is five. Here the, the, the loops are not connected to each other, so the frequencies add. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to change this. So I'm going to take this loop and put it inside the other loop. And my first question is, is this going to compile when I hit the compile button? And if not, why not? Compiler is going to be confused about something. It's going to say, hey, you, you told me this thing happened, and then you're sort of creating another one. Can you tell me where the conflict will be? So look where the error is. It's right here. And look what the error says. Do you see it says that the variable is already declared in the previous line? So here you declared an I variable. And so you can't declare another one because then it won't know which one you're referring to. So one of the things we have to learn here is that two variables in the same scope cannot have the same name. So we're going to change this other variable to a J just so that there's no more conflict. And now when I hit the compile button, you see that the compiler error goes away. Now you notice that these two loops are not in series anymore. These two loops are what's called a nested configuration, and I'd like you to discuss with your partner how many times will the word hello appear when I run this code. So five would be if they were separate and ran one after the other, but here they're inside one another. Okay, so when we have nested loops, the frequencies will multiply instead of adding. So series loops, the frequencies add. Nested loops, the frequencies multiply. So this will run six times. So let's run that. And you can see there's six times the word hello has appeared. If you're having trouble following this, I'll make this easier for you by showing you what the values of i and j are each time through the loop. So this time I'm going to print the values of i and j so you can see what's going on. First time I run the loop, it'll be zero and zero. Ms. Ria, what will be the second the second time through? What will I and J be? I will be zero and J will be one. And then the next time through the loop, what will the values of I and J be? Uh, Ms. Ria, one zero. So let me just show you that. You'll get the idea what's going on here. You can see here the first time through, let me put the code and the loops right next to each other. You can see the first time through it's zero, 00, then zero, 01. Then when we run out of J's, the J goes back to zero and the outer loop gets incremented by one. This will be a little bit easier to see when I increase these a little bit. So let's make this uh, four and let's make this three. Now, how many times in total will the loop run here? 12 is correct. The first time I run through the loop, what will be the values of I and J, Miss Missone? So you can see it runs 12 times. And as Ms. Masson has said, look what's happening to the J variable here. Do you see that the J is increasing at a faster rate than I? And then you see that I only changes every three. Why every three? Because that's how many different numbers J becomes. 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. 
And now I is finally increasing after J gets to two and rolls back over to zero, then I increases by one. So now I'm going to show you the power of nested loops. I'm going to ask you to work on a problem with your partner. It's kind of a challenging problem. We want to figure out how many ways to get 27 cents using pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. Now, what we want to do is we every time we come up with a different way to get 27 cents, we want to print the answer. We don't know how many different ways there are going to be. There are going to be lots of different ways. But I'm going to give you some hints on how to do this. So first, what I want to do is I want to go back and write a simple for loop here. And I'm going to call this, instead of calling it I, I'm going to call it quarters. And I want you to try and figure out what do I need to put in here so that as this loop runs, it will tell me for each number of quarters I have, how many total cents I have. I'd like you to work on this with your partner and figure out how to replace this double question mark with an expression, some sort of mathematical expression. Sir, when I have zero quarters, I want it to say zero cents. When I have one quarter, I want it to say 25 cents. When I have two quarters, I want it to say 50 cents. What do I need to put here, Jeremy? So there's no I here, but you were very close. And you can see here that it prints out the amount of money I have. I can make this slightly fancier. And I can say, when I have... And I'm just going to bend this around so that it all kind of fits on my screen. So it's detailing for me when I have this many quarters, that's how many total cents I have. You see that, right? Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to add an if statement here. And I only want to print the money if it's an odd number of cents. So my question is, what do I need to put in here so that will, this print will only happen when it's an odd amount of money, an odd number of cents. So try to figure out what goes in here now. Not an odd number of coins, but an odd number of cents. So this would be how many coins I have. I want to know how much money I have. OK, and when this is equal to what, sir? So you can see when I have one or three quarter, quarters, I have an odd amount of money. OK, so now back to our original problem. I want to figure out all the different ways I can get pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. I'll give you two hints. You need nested loops. How many nested loops will you need? I'll let you figure that out by yourself. And you're going to need if statements. I don't know if you'll need one or more. See if you can print out every combination of 27 cents that's possible, like 27 pennies, two dimes, and seven pennies, one dime, two nickels, seven pennies. Well, you get the idea. OK, I'm going to give you one hint now. How many nested loops, how many variables, how many loops are we going to need here? Who wants to take a guess? How many loops? Mr. Degouge? We're going to have four loops. OK, four loops here, all inside one another. So your, your solution should have four loops. So one loop inside another loop inside another loop inside another loop. That's the big hint. Now you should be able to use those four loops and, a common, and some uh, if statement or whatever to calculate when you have 27 cents. And each time you do, print it. In my quest for 27 cents, What's the smallest number of quarters that can be in the solution? And what's the largest number of quarters, Ms. Erda? OK, so we agree that the smallest number can be 0. And we agree that the quarters has to be less than or equal to 1. And we're going to increase the quarters here like that. So for the dimes, what's the smallest number of dimes I can have? Mr. Angad, how many dimes can I have, sir? So smallest number and largest number to make 27 cents. If I have three dimes, it's too much money. Okay, and now nickels. 
Um, Miss Banerjee, how many nickels is the smallest and how many nickels would be the largest? So four is not right, Miss. Four nickels would be 20 cents, but I can actually have five nickels to make 25 cents because it's still less than 27 cents. And what should I limit the penny range to be here? Um, Miss uh, Solid Car, what should the penny range be limited to? Zero. And P is less than or equal to 27. And here we want to print our solution. So we want to say, and it'll be convenient for us if we number our solutions. So to do that, I'm going to just create another variable. And I'll just print that also here. And uh, I will need to increase the I variable. Let me wrap this around so you can see it a little bit more easily. And now I'm almost at the solution. I just have to figure out when do I know I have this some combination here. It's going to yield 27 cents. Or not. Oh, we got to put the little ints here. Sorry about that. Let's try that again. And you can see that there are 13 different ways to get 27 cents. First way is to have all pennies. You can have 22 pennies and one nickel, 17 pennies, two nickels. Here's some random solution. Takes one dime, two nickels, and seven cents. So you should be able to do this. Now here, I am using these nested loops to do something called a brute force search. I don't know what makes 27 cents, so I try everything. Every possible combination I try. Some of them work, some of them don't work. I print out the ones that work. So this is a brute force search using nested loops. So um, you see these numbers here? These are known as magic numbers. People looking at your code will have no idea why those numbers are there. So I have coded with magic numbers, and I really shouldn't have. So I'm going to show you a better way to write this, which does not have these magic numbers in it. 